the mother on Om. In India's languages, they have this Om, which is a marvel. You know what they say? That Om is the totality of the sounds of the creation perceived by the Supreme. He hears Om as a call to him, as an idea. It's magnificent, as a symbol, as a only... And then the disciple says, and a power, not only as a symbol, but as a power. And mother says, oh, a tremendous power, tremendous. The first time I heard it, the first time I heard it, there was a certain Bernard who had spent a year in India, in the Himalayas. And he was visited by yogis whom he didn't know. He lived in a hut in the Himalayas all alone. One yogi came to him. He didn't say anything. He just sat by his side and then left. And that yogi simply told him, Om. Then he came back to France recounted his experiences in India, and he said that. Me, I knew absolutely nothing of India at that time. And when he uttered the word Om, Mother brings her arms down. It came a force like this. My whole entire body, everything vibrated in an extraordinary way. It was like a revelation. Everything, but everything started vibrating. Then I said, at last, here's the true sound. Yet I knew nothing, absolutely nothing, neither what it meant nor anything. Another time, Mother continues. I made an experiment writing the letter Om. When you have written it four, five, six times, it becomes excellent. I wanted to know why you were asked to do that work and what you could draw from it. So I sat down to write your yantram, and it became very living. I could see it in front of me. I kept seeing it all the while. But then I thought, the very fact of writing must have an effect. Then I started writing the letter OM carefully. Well, when I came to the fourth, the fifth, it became excellent, excellent, as though it were creating a vibration. That's the power it has, an external power. But then it was very amusing parentheses, the body is like a child, really a child. Suddenly it said, oh, what a lovely game to be sitting like this and writing. Oh, how amusing. If I had the time, it would be great fun to write and write lots and lots of times. I saw that in the body, in the body's cells. Then I understood. And another time, Mother says, There is one sound which, to me, has an extraordinary power, extraordinary and universal. That's the important point. It doesn't depend on the language you speak. It doesn't depend on the education you were given. It doesn't depend on the atmosphere you breathe. And that sound, without knowing anything, I used to say it when I was a child. You know how in French we say, oh, well, I used to say, om, without knowing anything. And indeed, I made all kinds of experiments with that sound. It's fantastic, even fantastic. It's unbelievable.
and at another time. Naturally, men make it difficult, parentheses. I think they must love difficulties because, end parentheses, with everything, the smallest thing is always a world of difficulties. So you spend your time saying, quiet, 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 be quiet. Even the body lives in difficulties. It too seems to love them. But all of a sudden, the cells chant their OM spontaneously. Then there is a sort of childlike joy in all those cells. They say, parentheses, in a tone of wonder, in parentheses, oh really, we can do that? We are allowed to do that? It's touching. And the result is immediate that great, peaceful, all-powerful vibration. Mother continues another time. A mantra given by the Guru is only the power to realize the experience of the discoverer of the mantra. The power is automatically there because the sound contains the experience. I saw that once in Paris, at a time when I knew nothing of India, absolutely nothing, only the usual nonsense. I didn't even know what a mantra was. I had gone to a lecture given by some fellow who was supposed to have practiced, quotes, yoga for a year in the Himalayas and recounted his experience. None too interesting either, in parentheses. All at once, in the course of his lecture, he uttered the sound Om, and I saw the entire room suddenly fill with light, a golden, vibrating light. I was probably the only one to notice it. I said to myself, well. And then I didn't give it any more thought. I forgot about the story. But as it happened, the experience recurred in two or three different countries with different people. And every time there was the sound OM, I would suddenly see the place filled with that same light. So I understood. That sound contains the vibrations of thousands and thousands of years of spiritual aspiration. There is in it the entire aspiration of men towards the Supreme. And the power is automatically there because the experience is there. And again at another time. Naturally, if there's also an awareness of the idea behind it, if one does japa as a very active conscious invocation, then its effects are greatly multiplied. But the basis is the magic of sound. This is a fact of experience, and it's absolutely true. The sound om, for instance, awakens very special vibrations. There are other sounds as well, but of course that one is the most powerful of all. It is an attempt to divinize material substance. From another almost identical point of view, it fills the physical atmosphere with the Divine Presence. So time spent in Japa is time consecrated to helping the material substance enter into more intimate rapport with the Divine.
Then Mother said to another disciple, Each verse of Savitri is like a revealed mantra which surpasses all that man possesses by way of knowledge. And I repeat this, the words are expressed and arranged in such a manner that the sonority of the rhythm leads you to the origin of sound, which is Om. Mother writes again, or rather speaks to a disciple, with the help of Om, one can realize the divine. Om has a transforming power. Om represents the divine. The sound. They say that all the aspirations of the world, when going towards the divine, make Om like that. The mother chants the word. And then that is why they say Om. There was a Frenchman who came back from the Himalayas, who had stayed there some time, and he gave a lecture. And I listened to the lecture, and in the lecture he said that when he was deep in the Himalayas, there was a sannyasin whom he didn't know, who came to see him, and told him only this, Om, and that he was completely changed. And then when he said Om, when he said Om, I felt the same change in me as if the divine was coming in. Om, Om, it must be manifested. If anything goes wrong, repeat Om. All will go well. This was published in Ananda Sagar, January 2010 entitled Om Chanting from My Treasures by Shobha Mitra. In one of the first December programs, the mother selected four of us to recite Sri Aurobindo's poem, The Ascent and the Descent. She would direct us individually after coming back from the tennis ground. One day, being deeply moved by her formidable voice, I asked the mother, Mother, teach me how to chant Om. The mother became quite upright, closed her eyes, and started chanting Om. My words cannot express the experience I had at that time. It was magnificent. I wish we had some facility to record both her recitation and Om chanting. The mother kept silent for a little while and then started speaking. Mother, choose an open space like the open sky or sit in front of the sea and chant Om as I have shown you. If you do it sincerely, it will certainly widen your consciousness. You will find a vaster, wider consciousness growing in you. She said on another occasion, whenever you are ill or you are attacked by some unpleasant element which you want to get rid of, chant Om. It will disappear. You will find so much peace. On one of my birthdays, I asked, Mother, how to go within? Mother, Ah, I have spoken about it many times. She keeps silent for a very long time, as if in trance, then speaks again. Mother, put your body in a comfortable position and start chanting Om. You will find that you are before a tunnel, a long, narrow tunnel. Go on chanting, go on chanting intensely, wholeheartedly. You will find that the tunnel is, 
you will find that tunnel slowly getting illumined. Go on, go on doing it as often as possible. You will find one day that you have come to the end of the tunnel and at the core of your heart where the Lord is. It is a long process but you are sure to arrive at it if you are sincere. Lastly, from the Supreme Discovery by Mother. Beautiful, doubtless, was the song of the primordial sphere rocked on the bosom of immensity. But how much more beautiful and triumphal is the symphony of the constellations, the music of the spheres, the immense chorale filling the heavens with an eternal hymn of victory.